This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another mini review. Today we're taking a look at the Red Giant Bang plugin by Red Giant slash Maxon. It is part of the VFX suite and basically it is a customizable 3D volumetric muzzle flash plugin for After Effects. Supports 32-bit linear color space. A lot of options here. Let's go ahead and check it out. So this plugin right here was actually available on AE scripts by another third party developer. I believe Maxon slash Red Giant bought them out and now it's integrated into their VFX suite. So it's part of their Red Giant Complete subscription model. And so if you already have Red Giant Complete subscription, then you already have this plugin in your arsenal and part of the VFX2 suite. And so basically, you know, rather than relying on stock footage like how we normally would traditionally, you now have a 3D volumetric plugin to do all this. And the best way to show you real quick is to just create a blank new After Effects layer here. We'll just call this um, Bang. And we'll apply the Red Giant VFX Bang plugin. And right off the bat, you're gonna get a nice little muzzle flash. And so, you know, my initial concerns about, you know, a particle system, cause you see this in hit film and stuff like that, or, you know, Tropical Particular or Stardust on, you know, particle system trying to emulate muzzle flashes. And quite frankly, it looks really, really bad. This is the first 3D simulated muzzle flash particle plugin that actually looks pretty decent for what it is. So right off the bat, you do have a ton of presets here. So if you go in here, there's tons of, you know, 45 Magnum, AK-47s, um, M16s, shotguns, Uzis, and a whole bunch of other sci-fi stuff. Um, so you can select whatever, you know, suits your boat here, hit apply, and it would automatically apply. Um, you do have this really nice convenient UI overlay. So right now it's set to a generic assault rifle, you know, whatever that means. Um, but of course you can go ahead and submit, set it to, you know, a pistol. It doesn't shape the muzzle flash. It is purely just kind of a help UI overlay. So you can do a shotgun um, to kind of match whatever you're doing. I'm gonna change it to an automatic rifle here. Um, so an AR-15 or M16 pattern rifle right here. So the cool part about Bang is that it's fully generated. And so basically it is fully 3D volumetric. And so you have two options on how to kind of place and aim this thing. The first mode is a 2D slash depth mode, which I think is the easiest method for most cases. Um, so if you're just compositing basic shots, basic action scenes or whatever, um, this is the traditional way of doing it. It's kind of like, you know, kind of manually positioning the rotation and scale and, you know, transform properties and angling the muzzle flash that way. So I can go ahead and, you know, simulate this kind of angle right here by dragging this point here, dragging this point here. And of course you can kind of change the position, change the aim of it, and you can kind of rotate it in a certain way to where you can kind of angle it however you want. So you can angle it towards you, you can angle it away from you. And by changing the two points right here, you can kind of simulate, you know, the angle that you kind of want. Um, and so it's not fully 3D per se, but you can simulate that look pretty easily. And by just manipulating some points, you can actually achieve that that look that you want that way. But let's say for whatever reason you need a you know fully 3D tracked method of doing this, you actually have the 3D mode right here, which gives you a ton of 3D position data. You can create a null to attach this to. Um, and the cool part here is that it's completely 3D. So you can go ahead and change the sweep. You can rotate it completely 360 degrees and get everything you need with different angles of the muzzle flash. And of course you can change the tilt as well. If you want to tilt it this way. And then of course the roll, you know, true 3D fully customizable muscle flashes right here. And this is great if you're doing, you know, super stylized slow motion muzzle blast shots and stuff like that. And so if you need to get up and close or, you know, slow motion type 3D volumetric 3D scenes kind of stuff with muscle flashes, then this is the way to go. And of course you can always tie this to tracking data and 3D track stuff and it would behave normally. Now the next part here is the keyframer. Now this is probably my least favorite part of everything. And so basically whenever you want to fire a shot, it's based on keyframe. And so basically the options here, number of rounds means how many rounds you have in the magazine, right? Cause you don't have unlimited ammo like in the movies do. Um, so you can cap it at, you know, 30 rounds per mag or 15 rounds per mag, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, and so, that, you know, for most things, let's say it's an AR-15, we'll do, you know, 28 rounds or 30 rounds. And so you will only fire 28 rounds max. And then you have the rate of fire. So how many rounds are you firing per second? So I'm gonna just do maybe like five rounds. And so how this works is that you can either manually keyframe the trigger yourself, or you can hit add keyframe and click this. 
and it will actually add keyframes. So it'll add, um, you know, five rounds per second up to 25 rounds or 25 keyframes here. And so it automatically kind of spaced out the keyframes like this to kind of help you animate the firing rate. So if you're doing like fully automatic, this would be a lot easier than manually keyframing, you know, 30 rounds or 28 rounds. Um, the only downside I see is that it is very, very, very linear. Not everyone kind of fires at the same rate. Um, so I wish that there was more of like either like a burst mode or randomized slider that allows you to pretty much randomize how fast firing, because it's pretty linear here. So if I hit play, you'll see that we're firing at a pretty linear rate Every time it fires, you get a different type of muscle flash, which can be fully customizable. So speaking of customizable, we have the flash shape. This is probably the coolest part of the plugin right here. And so this is the profile of the muscle flash. So if I just kind of rotate it back to the other side here, you can see, and if I scale this up, um, you can see that we can actually go in here and really manually fine tune the muzzle flash. So as I adjust the shape and contour of everything, you can actually shape, like visually shape the particles of the muzzle flash and get a completely different look here. So, you know, we can taper it off sooner or we cannot. Um, so just by manipulating these little points, you can actually create some pretty interesting looks in your own customizable muscle flash. And of course you can increase the size of everything by pulling this up. That'll kind of increase that blast. And you can also stretch things out. Um, so you can go ahead and increase the flash length and that will really stretch out the um, muscle flash that way, just like this. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And so a lot of times firearms have like muzzle brakes, compensators or whatever it's that. And so depending on the pattern of the compensator um, that releases the gas, um, you actually get some nice little pedaling of the missile flash right here. And so we have some common options like three pedal, which will add three little pedals to the brake right here to really simulate that look. You have customizable options. You can do four pedals or no pedals. And so you get something that looks a little bit more, more aggressive, a little bit more violent. And of course, all the pedal options are adjustable. So we can change the shape profile individually of the pedals. You can increase the length of it. So if you want some crazy high, long pedals, you have that. Um, some basic controls like the radius and the angle and the relative brightness. So you can kind of tone it down if you don't want it to be too crazy for the pedals. Of course, you have the basic flash properties of everything. So you, you can change the color from, you know, an orange to a blue if you're trying to make some sci-fi, you know, firearms or whatever like that. You have, you have all the basic options you would expect. Brightness, brightness random. So every time you shoot, um, you might have a different brightness. Displacement is kind of how to displace this muzzle flash. So if we crank it up to like 200, for example, things start to look a little bit more crazy, a little bit more violent. So the flash age is kind of like the muzzle flash over time, right? So if you set it to zero, it's a fresh, you know, instant part of the burst right here. And as we increase the flash age, you're going to see the progression in the bang of the muzzle flash as we progress through time. So you can really select when at what point in time do you want to see the muzzle flash in terms of its age and lifespan? And of course, you can randomize this by 20% or whatever. So every time you fire, you have a different age of the muzzle flash, depending on when the camera captures that in the shutter speed. Um, so pretty cool stuff. Now, what really makes it stand apart is that you have these extra options here. So you have the addition of sparks. So you can go ahead and increase the spark up to 100%. And you'll see nice little sparks right here. And if we go ahead and increase dispersion a little bit, so you can see a little bit better and increase the um, spark brightness, you'll really see this kind of sparks. And this is really awesome for the extra oomph of the whole thing, right? You know, the whole point of compositing these muscle flashes is, in is integrating sparks, smokes, heat blurs, distortions, glows, and all that stuff like that. And so this plugin will allow you to do that. So we also have a heat blur option, which can show the heat map as well. So after you fire right here, after a little delay that you can set, you can actually kind of blur this area as kind of like a heat distortion. So obviously you can't see this with the black background, but you can increase the distortion, the smokiness and blur amount. You're gonna kind of get like a nice little haze after the firing, 
which will add that extra style to everything as well. The masking option is pretty straightforward in terms of just masking the muzzle flash out. So, you know, if you're trying to hide behind a pole or, you know, brick wall or something like that, you can kind of mask up the muzzle flash by selecting the mask layer. Um, pretty boring stuff. The glow options, again, pretty boring stuff. This glow is actually from Optical Glow from the Red Dragon Suite. So it has kind of that realistic natural inverse square fall off um, that you're kind of used to. So you can play around with the size and the glow amount and everything like that and change the quality of the glow. I don't want to talk about that stuff right here. Now the interactive lighting is pretty bare bones, but it is actually pretty interesting. Um, and I'll show you this in my other demonstration, but essentially you can kind of create mask and have an add interactive lighting that way. And finally, you have the rendering options, um, whether your footage is for linear or log. Um, and of course you can change the compositing to a black background if it blends in better or set the background compositing to transparent. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a quick overview. Here I have an actual footage with Bang applied to it. And so you can see here that the interactive lighting is um, based on this matte layer. So I created this matte layer. I kind of drew these really rough masks. Um, obviously you would be more detailed if you were doing it for real. I'm about to use these little masks and I keyframe them on areas where I want the interactive lighting to be. And so basically I kind of made a matte layer right there and I defined that matte in my interactive lighting. And I just selected the matte, select you know, either mass or effects and mass and set it to either alpha or luminance. Um, in this case I use alpha. And here you can kind of crank down or up the interactive lighting. So um, if I set it to zero, you see that his face gets a little bit darker and his arm gets a little bit darker right here. Um, but if I set it to like 80%, it will kind of light up this area that I define in my mat um, every time we fire a shot. And so this is kind of useful because traditionally you would have to draw your own mask, animate the brightness and everything like that, the opacity and you have to time it up to the fire of the shots. Um, but in this case, it's pretty automatic just based on when the muzzle flash fires. So this is pretty handy. I will say that the whole control options is a little bit finicky and there's no option to view just the interactive lighting. By default, these settings don't really work for this shot. And so I, I didn't see any results. You really have to kind of restrict the, the interactive lighting to just the mat pretty high and then adjust the size um, the size is based on where the muzzle flash is. So if this is too small, you won't see any of this. I really wish there was an option to render and show just the interactive lighting. So I can really see where is it defined? Is it working? Is it bright enough? Is it too feathered out? So on and so forth. Found that positioning things in 3D is a little bit difficult because sometimes this point right here isn't where the muzzle is. So if I, you see right here, this little point where you think the muzzle would be is not where the muzzle is. It's right over here. Um, and I think that's because I'm, I'm misaligning and misscaling the, the position of the 3D firearm. So maybe it's on my part. Lastly, sometimes when you fire, you have these little dots right here. It's for the end of the barrel, which I guess makes sense. But sometimes I just wish that there was an option to kind of shut this center glow off, or at least have more control over this kind of center glow right here. Because based on what I found, there is really no way to kind of shut this little glow thing off right here in the center for the barrel. And so I wish there was individual controls for that or an option to hide it. Now, how does it really compare to traditional compositing methods using log footage? And so this footage right here, by the way, was provided by Action VFX, our great friends over there. They provided this footage for me to use as a base plate. This video isn't sponsored by Red Giant or Maxon or even Action VFX. I'm not getting any composition for it. Uh, but traditionally, if you were using stock footage, like from the Action VFX muzzle, um, collection right here. You would traditionally bring in your footage right here. You would have to rotate it. I'm gonna shut off the bang effect real quick. Um, you would position it roughly, maybe you enable 3D and you kind of position everything and then you would have to apply an effects curves. And of course, play around with, you know, all this and add your own glows and whatnot. And maybe, you know, add your own interactive lighting and feather this out. Is the Bang plugin worth it? And who is it for, basically? The pros of Bang is that it's very, very customizable. You have unlimited angles, unlimited timing. It's, you know, it's fully 3D. You have the automatic glow distortion smoke sparks. You have support for log. You have the wireframe UI. It looks relatively pretty realistic for a 3D particle system that's generated. Obviously, if you have the... Red Giant complete subscription, or maybe let's say you work on a lot of TV shows or productions that have a lot of gunfire action stuff, then this plugin is definitely worth it because you either already have it as part of your collection subscription, 
or you do a lot of this stuff. So having that in your arsenal would make a lot of sense. But if you're doing it just for like your one hobby short film, or maybe you're working on this one project that has action scenes, or you know, you're just a hobbyist, you're just trying to have fun, or you're a YouTuber or whatever, then obviously the subscription model for Bang may not be worth it. I really like the traditional method of doing things, of using actual stock footage of muscle flashes. It takes a little bit more work, but a lot of it you can kind of do it once and kind of copy and paste things like the color correction and stuff like that. The only downside is the sparks and the smokes. But again, you can also get stock footage for that, which will look even better and more realistic than a 3D particle system. The downside of Bang is one, the subscription model as part of Redrian Suite. There isn't a lot of randomized timing options. So I wish there was more randomized timing options. Um, I wish there's a way to kind of hide that center glow where I have at least more options for it. And of course, I don't think it looks as good as actual stock footage of muzzle flashes, obviously. Now in the past, you were typically limited to 2D muzzle flashes from the side profiles, but our friends over at Action VFX actually have a lot of gun effects, um, like gun smoke, bullet hits, um, you know, all these other spark hits and all these other free bullet shells that you need to animate and everything, tracers. Um, but their muzzle flash collection right here actually has a lot of different angles. So of course you have the side profiles, but again, if you have muscle flashes coming towards you, you have those angles as well. You have ones directly towards you, away from you, a whole bunch of different angles that you can actually use. And so I would say with something like Action VFX, all the angle options that, that bank provide isn't as strong of a plus anymore because now we have collections that have all these different angles um, from different firearms, from different styles, suppressed and non-suppressed, and a whole bunch of different angles from stock footage from Action VFX. So you may not need a 3D plugin to do that. Of course, if you're not using muscle flashes like every single day for all your projects and whatnot, and you don't already have Red Giant Complete, then it may make sense to either just buy this collection outright uh, as a one-time fee and you can use it pretty much forever with that the subscription model or if you really have to use a whole bunch of elements at once you can go ahead and subscribe to the action vfx plan it's a lot cheaper 15 to 30 dollars for the most part and side note action vfx actually has a black friday sale coming up in the next couple of days it's basically 55 percent off all the vfx elements including the clips collections and bundles there's discounts on the annual subscriptions so if you subscribe to the annual subscription you get two times the amount of monthly elements and the cool part is if you renew your plan each year you'll still get the double the elements so now it's the time to jump on if you're kind of interested in this kind of stuff also if you buy four collections you get the fifth one free and if you've purchased any 2k collections in the past you get a special upgrade pricing for the 4k version for black friday so just check them out um, again they're not sponsoring this video they're just you know our friends of the channel i really like their stuff before i go i want to give a quick thanks for our sponsors over at squarespace for sponsoring today's video Squarespace isn't one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have an amazing theme to choose from, fully customizable, so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support, and best of all, if you use promo code DOJO at checkout, you actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is basically the Bane plugin by Maxon slash Red Giant, whatever they're called now. Um, pretty awesome plugin for what it is, pretty realistic for what it is. Let me know what you guys think about this plugin. Let me know if you would actually subscribe to the Red Giant Complete for this plugin or not, or would you rather just use stock footage? Let me know in the comments down below for the YouTube algorithm. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.